What's up guys? Today uh, we're gonna start off by removing the um, fuel injectors from the 24 valve and the reason why we're gonna do that is because we are getting upgraded uh, injectors in order to support the amount of horsepower that this uh, engine is gonna make now. So uh, we gotta pull them out and mail them off and then wait like five weeks for the new ones to come in. So. Um, Basically just removing the rockers first with the pedestals and I like to just uh, stack them into the valve cover um, It's nice and clean in there. So that way I don't get any dirt on it. All right, we got all of the rockers off with the pedestals and the next step is going to be to remove these cover plates and the injectors are going to be underneath there We will also have to remove the uh, injector lines all right, we got our injector covers off and that is the injector. The way you remove these guys is you take a bolt, I think it's an M10, it's, a, it's the same bolt that will work on your intake manifold and you thread it into the top of the injector here like this. And then you'll take a pry bar like this and just use it to pry up the injector. But first we have to remove the injection lines so that the feed tubes can pop out and also, we'll have to remove them off of the P-pump as well. Okay, I'm not entirely sure that this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try and remove the injectors without actually completely removing the lines. It seems like I have a fair bit of play in between the um, crossover tube and injector lines, so here we go. So like I said, we take our pry bar here and put it underneath the head of this bolt that you would take off your intake manifold cover right here. And uh, the most important thing you want to do is take a rag and lay it over the entire injector just like that because it's going to pop out with a lot of force and I have actually had them fly out and land on the ground and you really don't want that. So uh, here we go. First try. It does take a little bit more pressure than you would um, probably assume it would, but here we go. Oh, actually, that came out really easy. And there it is, that's uh, injector number one. And I brought a cardboard box out here. We'll just go ahead and load them up in. Comes number two. Let's see if we even need the rag on this one. When I first pulled them out, they went flying, so. Oh, they're a lot. A lot smoother this time. Again, there's the injector. That's where the crossover tube goes in. And it's very important. You wanna make sure the copper washer right here comes out with the injector. Injector three. you guys watch from close up this time okay there we go and just lift and there we go very simple okay so the rag was entirely not necessary but when I first removed these injectors uh, it totally would have helped me a lot because like I said I did lose a few um, they completely flew out of the head but maybe I was just torquing on it too hard who knows so the next step is, like I said, we're gonna mail these guys off. And um, I guess there's a long lead time right now because uh, it's sled pulling season coming up here. Uh, so we're, we're gonna have to wait about five weeks to get our replacements, but uh, those are our cores. And we're gonna go ahead and just set everything back inside the, uh, the head here so we can put the valve cover back on and not have to worry about dust. All right, got everything set back in there, including the uh, injector covers and we're just gonna throw the valve cover back on for the time being. All right, now we're just gonna wait uh, for our replacements to come in and get this thrown back together. And then we can really start uh, messing with the engine. We have to set the P-pump timing, we have to double check the engine timing, and uh, uh, there's a whole other list we have to do, adjust the valve train. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot. Uh, adjust, adjust the uh, fuel trim on the P-pump. So we, we've got a, a long list ahead of us, but uh, it all starts with those injectors. 
Hey guys, so today what we're going to be doing is making our own uh, tool to check the and set the timing on the P-Pump. And the way we're going to do that, uh, I'm sure most of you guys with P-Pumps know it's like 180 bucks in that area to get the kit to do this. And I think if you already have a gauge like this, and it doesn't have to be a nice one, you can get one from Summit for like 30 bucks and you can get the extension kit from Amazon for like another 20 bucks, maybe less. And if you get a delivery valve holder off of eBay, which you can get for like $25, uh, all you have to do is drill out the center here to be the size of the neck on the gauge. And then we'll, we'll drill a hole in the side here through the threads to uh, add a screw, a set screw. And then we'll be able to slide the gauge through this and thread it in to the P-Pump, just like a delivery valve, and check our timing. Alright, this is what we're looking like so far. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It was a lot more difficult than I thought drilling through this guy. Reason being is there's like um, some hardened steel in there along with a spring and I think a bearing. And uh, it's, it's a little orifice that you could see on this side that I had a, a lot of tr trouble getting through. I ended up having to uh, hammer it quite a bit and break um, that hardened steel into pieces and knock it out a little bit at a time. And then I was able to finish drilling my hole, but we got it done. And now all I need to do is put a set uh, screw right here to hold the gauge and we'll be ready to pull out our um, be able to pull out our delivery valves and then set our timing on the pump hey everyone so today I finally got the injectors back to put on uh, the P pump 24 valve and we're gonna be working on that I, I also got new delivery valves for the P pump and um, we're gonna work on setting the timing with our uh, gauge here and our custom gauge adapter for the P-Pump that we made. And I've also got a fuel plate for the P-Pump, so we're gonna be uh, really tearing into that guy today. And we're probably going to be adjusting valves as well. And um, there's a couple other things I'm forgetting right now, but uh, I've never worked um, on a P-Pump before, and this is my first uh, time doing anything diesel related to be honest. So I'm going to be referencing a lot of articles online and I'll try to translate um, the way I understand it as best as I can to you guys uh, here in this video. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is take off the valve cover and the injector lines and pull out the crossover tubes. And then we'll go from there. So the lines and valve cover, everything was still loose from uh, when I took the injectors out to send them off. And um, one thing that I wanted to point out real quick, I just noticed um, the rocker bridges have these little dimples or nipples on them. And uh, I could tell pretty quick that meant that they were directional. And you can see I have mine facing both ways. And a quick Google search told me that the uh, nipples should be facing towards the passenger front. So that means they should all be facing towards the turbos. And um, mine were kind of mixed up. I never uh, intended to run it this way, but uh, I didn't even know those were there. So just a quick tip. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, pull out these crossover tubes because we have new O-rings for them and we'll clean them up some too. All right, so I've got the crossover tubes pulled out and I'm pretty much ready to reinstall them. I got the new O-rings on and also almost ready to install the injectors. However, before I do, I'm going to um, work on setting the uh, timing for the P-Pump. And the reason why is um, with all the rockers removed off of the engine like that, I don't um, have any valves open, so the engine doesn't rotate um, very well. So with the injectors pulled out, it's almost like having a spark plug removed and the pressure inside the cylinders are able to release so I can actually rotate the engine over. So what I'm gonna do is 
pull off the front timing cover here. I'm 99% sure that I'm still set at top dead center because uh, I haven't rotated anything since I reassembled the engine. And I can tell just looking at the push rods here that, uh, you know, this is cylinder one and you can see both push rods um, intake and exhaust are both sitting in the uh, position that is the lowest compared to all the rest. And that would tell us that this cylinder is on its compression stroke and neither valve is open, which would indicate top dead center um, compression stroke exactly where we need to be to um, set the timing for the P-pump. But I just want to double check and verify that the marks from the cam to the crank sensor are lined up pretty straight. So we'll pull this cover off real quick. Got the um, cover off there. So now you can see we are pretty dang close, but I think it needs to rotate back this way slightly. And uh, the way we'll do that is we'll just uh, throw um, a wrench on it here. I don't actually have the ability to use the barring tool because I don't have a flywheel installed on the back of the engine presently. It's only really supposed to be in here for mock-up. So um, yeah, let's just turn the pump nut. I like the look of it now. I think it's lined up pretty straight. And we're still looking pretty solid on the uh, push rods there. You can see cylinder one. Both of them have uh, minimum lift compared to all the rest. So I think this is uh, top dead center compression stroke. Now we can pull the uh, delivery valves out of the P-pump and throw our gauge in there. So I opted to go with the adjustable um, timing cam gear. So I went ahead and pulled the gear off of the pump so that we don't disturb the um, set top dead center of the engine and now we can remove the um, delivery valve holders the delivery valve socket is very special and unique specifically to the p-pump as far as i know it's the only part that i couldn't kind of diy make myself i ordered a blue point one off of amazon i believe that was like the cheapest route um, to go part number sp503 so we'll take off um delivery valve number one uh, that's the only one we really need access to, to to find and set the timing on this guy. I've got it unthreaded and I've read that when you remove it, a spring and some other pieces can possibly fall out. So you got to be real careful. So yeah, there's the spring. And we'll just go ahead and take this whole thing and I've got some uh, little egg crate here. We'll put, put it in. And there's the delivery valve so we just got to get a magnet to fish that guy out and then we can install our custom um, gauge adapter there's another piece in there I didn't think it was supposed to come out at first but I'm not seeing the cam lobe and when I rotated the pump I saw it push up my magnets having a hard time getting to it so I'm gonna try using a little pick to pull it out Maybe not. I don't know. Let me regroup. All right, I did a little research and it turns out that little guy's called the plunger and I don't believe it's supposed to come out. The gauge is supposed to ride on that. So I've got my delivery valve holder that I drilled out and modified to hold my gauge and we'll just thread this in. There we go, and now we can figure out which um, extension we're going to need for our gauge here. I bought a box of several different sizes, and uh, the way we'll figure that out is just by dropping it down in the hole and uh, seeing if it's too short or too long. So the extension I have on there is too long, but I bought this entire box of uh, extensions from Amazon for really cheap. I think it was like 15 bucks. And I'll just swap out to a different length and probably I would say that might work just a little little more than half the length all right well I've got um, the dial gauge inserted into the uh, P pump here and I'm still trying to fully grasp um, exactly what's going on with it still doing some reading and watching some videos um, the dial indicator does move properly so I'm kind of basing um, uh, what I'm doing right now off of a little tab inside that guy 
for adjusting the timing and um, a couple of charts offline. So while I'm figuring this out, I decided I'm going to go ahead and throw the injectors in and uh, the crossover tubes, get them back installed. And the reason why is I do have the truck sitting outside and I just don't really like having the valve cover off for this long. I don't believe that I'm going to have to rotate the engine over anymore since I have it set exactly where I need it. So it shouldn't be a problem uh, putting those guys back in. All right, so what we've got here is from Holly Speed Innovations, and um, it's 150 horse, I believe, six by .015 Bosch SAC injector, and um, this is what it looks like. We're gonna go ahead and throw the copper washers on each one and get them popped into their holes, and then we'll get these new O-rings installed on the crossover tubes and get those installed. Okay, so each injector gets a copper washer just like that. And then we're going to drop them back down into their holes. And we're going to make sure that the access port for the uh, crossover tube is facing in the right direction. Now the uh, parts that bolt down over the top of the injector will also ensure that it is pointing in the right direction. So I'm not too worried about it. You could probably just drop the copper washers down in the hole, but I just get a little... Not a teeny bit of oil on each one so that way it has like surface retention and won't just fall in when you're trying to stick the injector down in there and just pop them down like that we'll grab the uh, cover caps before we push them all the way down to make sure that they're pointing in the right direction got all six injectors uh, set into their holes and I haven't popped them down all the way yet I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cover right over here out of the valve cover a little, a little notch that lines up with each injector so it'll set it where it's supposed to be. Position it correctly, I guess I should say. Whoops. Okay. I'm gonna set the camera. Now I'm just replacing the O-rings on the crossover tubes and sliding them into place. All right, so these little bolts that uh, hold down the injector cover get torqued to 89 inch pounds or eight foot pounds. So that's what I've done. I did this one first and then the outside one just because the outside one doesn't actually rest on anything. So those are all torqued down and we're pretty much ready to throw the uh, rockers back in there and then throw the valve cover back on. Torquing the rocker arms um, back down to 28 foot pounds. All right, so we've got the valve cover back on and we'll worry about adjusting the valves after we finish up with the P-pump timing here. So we're gonna jump back on that now. And we also have to install a governor spring kit and uh, the delivery valves as well, so. All right, so I'm still trying to understand exactly what's going on here. Um, what I'm doing is trying to check the stock timing of the pump and I'm basically just getting this tab lined up dead center as um, I follow the other instructions of setting timing to try and get an idea of what exactly this pump is because um, it's off of an industrial application, not a Dodge. So I'm kind of starting from, uh, I don't have a starting point. I don't know exactly what horsepower that pump is. So I'm hoping by finding the stock timing on it I can reference that on the uh, timing charts and it'll tell me if this is 160, 180, or uh, etc. pump. So what I'm going to do is throw the cover back on because it's not necessary to have it off anymore. Um, I can just throw the bolts back into this once I get it all figured out. I have my timing set exactly where it needs to be. So we'll get the cover thrown on and tightened up and keep working at this pump timing. Right now I'm working on getting the... Um, delivery valves swapped out and they come with new o-rings this is a new pump so the uh, o-rings on there are pretty solid but i'm changing them out anyways and i haven't found any shims or anything uh, like that so far it's just been the delivery valve inside and the delivery valve holder with the spring so i got uh three more plus number one to do which obviously we'll have to wait until we're done setting the timing these things are screwed in there pretty tight so it takes a pretty good um pull to get them to break loose but once you do they spin out pretty freely by hand here we are spring I'll just take it and set it up here grab my magnet 
and then pull that guy out. I am setting these guys in a little egg crate over there. And then I just uh, take the new delivery valve, drop it down into its hole, and change out the O-ring, which I would show you, but it takes two hands, so. All right, well, I'm like 99% sure I've got it uh, basically figured out. So with our dial indicator here, I zeroed it out. Um, this is what the instructions call for you to do. And I'll, I'll just uh, redo the entire thing. First things first, make sure your plug is out for the um, timing pin inside the side of the pump here. Let me give you a better angle here. You probably can't see it, but there's a little tab up in there that uh, this slides into and locks it in place. So what I did to figure out what pump I have was, the uh, basic instructions online say what you gotta do is rotate the pump gear backwards until you see the dial indicator stop dropping and backwards is counterclockwise. So we're going back, we're going back. There it is, it stops rotating there. And uh, basically what you wanna do at that point, let's just double check that we're there, yeah. Go forward a little, okay. All right, so. It's at zero. You zero your gauge out once it stops dropping after going counterclockwise. And then from there, you're going to want to start rotating it clockwise. Okay, and you'll see the gauge starts move. For every one rotation the large needle does, this smaller needle counts it. And uh, so we did one full rotation, so that's one thousandth of an inch. Here we go to a second rotation. That's two thousandths of an inch. And now we're gonna check to see where our little tab is inside this guy. And it's in view. It's pretty close to the center. Um, it's not quite there yet, so we're just gonna keep rotating this a teeny bit um, until we get it centered where we like. And uh, it's really, really sensitive. Like I'm barely tapping on this and it's moving the needle. So I think that's pretty close. Let's right there. From what I've seen so far, oops. <laughs> okay, it is really sensitive, boom. Okay, yes. I think the tab is like centered really well there and the way you can tell is take your little plunger and insert it in and if the tab is in a good central central position, this thing should slide in pretty far without much hassle, which it does. So I think we're pretty much centered and the reading we get on our dial gauge is since we had two full rotations, that's two thousandths of an inch. And then we made it all the way to the 10 thousandths mark and all the way down to eight and a half. So we're at, 2018 I believe and if you reference the charts online I actually saved a picture of it but there's a chart that'll uh, show you for the uh, dial indicators they have it in both metric and standard and uh, if you look for the 49 state pump 160 175 horse at 11.5 degrees timing, um, which would be the stock timing setting, it's uh, 0.2185, which is exactly where our dial indicator lands with the tab at um, uh, centered for timing. So basically now we know what kind of pump this is, and we know that it's set at factory um, timing which is 11 and a half degrees and I think we're gonna go ahead and bump it up to 18 or so I'm gonna do a little bit of research on that right now to um, verify that and then we'll be able to reinstall our bolts on this and uh, away we'll go 
Okay, so a quick search revealed that a lot of people recommend starting with like 24 degrees timing for a similar setup to what I'm running. So we'll go ahead and set it for that. And according to our chart here, to get to 24 degrees timing on this pump, we need to be at 0.2559 on our dial indicator gauge. So we'll go ahead and just uh, keep bumping this guy up from uh, what it is currently set to. Just light taps on the wrench there. So now we're at 2200. Now we're at 2250. And I said we need to be at 22559, I believe. Let's see. 22559. Okay, so we're currently at. Yeah, we need to go a ways to get to 2559. Five, yeah, so we need to go all the way to the 5 over here. And uh, I didn't mention it, but make sure you pull out the guy that lines up the timing pin because uh, you will break that if you don't and you try to re rotate this. So we're at 2550. Five, Let's see. There's 2550. And we need to get to 2559. So we'll just rotate it a teeny bit more. And let me double check. Yeah, 2559. Yeah. So we're at 2550 and 2559. I think that should be pretty close. Let me double check. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that this is going to be it because we're at, uh, we did two full rotations and then we went to the five, so that gives us 0 0.250 and then we went to the halfway in between five and six, which gave us 2550 and we didn't go all the way to six, the sixth hash mark because that would put us at 2560, so we just went slightly before it and I believe that will be the sweet spot for 25. Five, nine. And um, we'll go ahead and pin this gear and then we'll double check everything and make sure that it's still the same. Okay, we got our bolts back in and what we're going to do now is the exact same thing we did to find timing in the first place. We're going to rotate the... Oh shit, this is going to turn the whole engine now. Hmm. Let me throw the bolts in here and do it from here because I don't want to back the pump nut off so I don't even think I can rotate the engine counterclockwise from here actually this is gonna be a problem okay so I wasn't able to uh, bar the engine backwards due to the fact that that nut just backs out when I attempt to do it and I'm not going to do it with the pump nut because it will also just back off and you have to replace that lock washer every time you loosen torque on that. So I'm 99.9% .9 sure that we got, um, got it correct and I'm not really worried about it. Worst case is when we go to uh, run it the first time is it won't run right and we'll just have to readjust it again but I'm pretty confident that that's not going to happen. So. I'm, I went ahead and installed the uh, delivery valve in with the delivery valve holder. I can throw the lines back on and move on to installing our fuel plate and our governor spring kit if I can find it. Alright, so I got the injector lines thrown back on and I read that the torque spec for these is 24 foot pounds and then it's like very critical because the lines can crack otherwise. So I don't have a open end wrench. Um, that I can set a torque setting on. So I'm gonna do a little research on what's required to make that happen before I try and tighten them. And I'll get back with you. So I have these adapters and I'm not sure how it's going to translate the actual torque setting to the bolts, but it seems to be working okay. So that's what I'm doing. Just uh, hooking it on there like that, turning it as much as it'll go, pulling it off and uh, Resetting it, throwing it back on there. Let's 
see it doesn't it actually hits the head before i'm able to get a full rotation so i have to continue all right next on the agenda i found our governor spring kit we're gonna go with the 4000 and we're also gonna do a fuel plate which is a 100 fuel plate and uh, once again i have never been inside a p-pump before so I'm going to do a little bit of research and get back with you guys and try and break it down as uh, best as I can. I believe that the governor springs are in there and I believe that the fuel plate is in this guy. So let me do a little research and get back with you. Alright so I'm going to try to do the governor spring kit first and the first thing I did was remove this armature that actuates the fuel shut off and um, it does have a notch for a keyway and a keyway on the shaft. so. Just make sure that keyway doesn't get lost. And next we're gonna take a 7 8 inch socket and remove this plug. Out, And you can see here is the first set of springs. So uh, let me read the instructions and see what's next. All right, so according to the instructions, what we're gonna wanna do is remove this little nut right here that holds on the uh, top cap there. But first what you wanna do is take a caliper and measure the distance from the top of this nut head to the top of the stud there and uh, the instructions say you should be seeing between um, point, uh, 0.40 and point 0.50 mine's measuring like point 0.31 and uh, I'm not going to be too worried about that right now but I'm just going to pop it off and see what we're looking at so basically the nut here is not under a lot of tension and you can just take a small screwdriver and twist it off a little bit at a time and once it gets close to coming off, I'd recommend having both hands in there to make sure you don't drop it. And I'm going to go ahead and do that myself now. So we got our nut here and our top hat here. And there you can see the stock uh, springs. We're going to remove those and add in our aftermarket ones. So we've removed the springs and um, a set of shims came out with them. Looks like we've got about one, two, three, four, five shims right there. So we don't want to lose those. We'll go ahead and place this set here in our little egg carton, just for safekeeping. And uh, let's read a little further. All right, so the next set of instructions called for removing the lower spring seat, which is two pieces. We also got three more shims out with it. This is the two piece lower seat. Uh, this piece was on top, sitting on top of that plate there. And I believe our new spring sets come with their own new lower si spring seat, which is right there. So we're going to go ahead and um, read a little bit further in the instructions and see what comes next before dropping anything in there. All right, so next steps on the instructions calls for us to drop the new one piece spring seat down onto the shaft and then install all four springs. Now. Our governor spring kit only comes with three. I'm gonna go ahead and assume we're supposed to reuse the largest original one uh, that was inside the P-pump. And this is what it's gonna look like. We'll just go ahead and uh, whoa. slide these babies on there. And then uh, we'll put the upper spring seat back on and get the nuts started again. All right, so we got the top hat back on. We put the nut back on. We threaded it back to its original position, um, which was the uh, point three seven, I believe it was. And now we're just gonna go ahead and bar the engine over to get to the other set. All right, second side is done. It's a pretty quick job. I didn't use any of the shims that were in there, and I'm gonna do a little research on that before buttoning this back up because it's just. Uh, want to double check that I'm not supposed to and I'll let you guys know in a second okay so after doing a little reading it looks like the shims are not necessary with the uh, 4k governor spring kit install so one thing that I did read um this little nut here as you start to thread it on it'll get to a point where it clicks into place and then um, instead of taking a measurement from stud to the top of the nut what you can do is just get get to the first click and then rotate it four more clicks and uh, make sure the other side is the same and you should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop our plug back in wherever I put that thing and uh, we should be good to go. 
All right, so we're all buttoned up here, and next up on the list is the fuel plate, and I believe we start by taking off these four bolts and removing this cover. Okay, so here's the, um, I believe it's called the AFC housing, and there's that. I'm not quite sure what we're looking at yet, but I believe we have to take that piece off as well. Okay, so this is actually the stock fuel plate. And it looks like the new fuel plate came with this adapter piece, which essentially is going to line up our new fuel plate exactly the same as how the old fuel plate is aligned. And you just go ahead and install it on there using the factory bolts that hold the AFC housing on. And now we're gonna go ahead and remove this. All right, well, this is the uh, factory fuel plate. And this is our 100 fuel plate that we're going to install in its place. So, we'll just go ahead and set that guy up there and drop this one into place. Should work just like that. Okay, so our new fuel plate is installed and we can go ahead and remove this guide plate and reinstall the AFC housing. And then um, I think we'll be okay until we actually are going to run the engine and fine tune it and then we can uh, you know, slide this plate back and forth or what have you. I still have to look into all that as well. All right, so I went ahead and pulled off the uh, front cover again because I wanted to triple check that I was at top dead center. And essentially what we're doing here is once you get to top dead center, we're gonna check intake, um, intake rockers one, two, and four. And we're gonna clearance them all for um, 10 thousandths of an inch. I've already done it, so. Feeler gauge fits under there nice and it's tight. Same with two and same with four. So now we can move on to setting the exhaust rockers. Okay, so with the engine at top dead center, we can also check exhaust rockers one, three, and five. And they like to have a gap of 0 0.026. So that's the feeler gauge we're gonna throw in there. And um, the way I do this is just loosen the lock nut Tighten the Allen wrench until the feeler gauge is in there snugly, but could still, you can still pull it out and reinsert it without too much effort. And then I uh, hold the Allen wrench steady and tighten down the lock nut with an open-ended wrench right here. So let's get, get uh, this set down. Okay, so once you um, do the three uh, rocker arms for intake and exhaust on the compression stroke of cylinder one top dead center, we're gonna go ahead and rotate uh, the crankshaft 360 degrees, and um, then we'll do the other six rockers. It's a little tough to tell um, where exactly 360 degrees is because we're not lining up anymore, but I would say this is pretty close judging by the amount these outer teeth are making contact with the uh, cam gear. So, We'll go with that and we will align up the uh, last few rockers here. Let's see. The uh, other ones we have to do is intake three, five, and six, and exhaust two, four, and six. So intake is going to be at 10 thousandths, and uh, exhaust is 0 0.026. So let's get started. All right, so I did a full rotation and rechecked all our gaps and our torque on the uh, adjusters here and we're all good to go 24 foot pounds on this nut and uh, all of our tolerances are right where they're supposed to be so we're gonna go ahead and throw the valve cover back on and call it done well that about wraps it up for today we got the um, fuel plate installed we got the injectors installed we got the P-pump time set for 24 degrees, and we also installed the delivery valves. We checked the timing on the engine, we adjusted the valve lash, and we installed our governor spring kit. So, pretty productive day, and uh, the engine is pretty much uh, almost ready to start. It, it needs a, a harmonic balancer and a belt and a few other odds and ends, but other than that, she's ready to go. So watch out for that video soon and uh, have a nice afternoon.